and welcome to Lounging with Lilith. I guess that's what we're calling it. I suppose. <laughs> Since uh, our friend and dear colleague uh, Scrump is in here. The the meme jihadist Scrump. Yeah, he's uh, apparently in Romania. That's too bad, because we're going to talk about Joker today. It is a little bit late to talk about Joker. You know, the, f the film is, is a month old at this point. But yes, I've I've true. I've been waiting to see how low the media will go over time in their attempts to to slander this movie or somehow stop it in its tracks because it's a good movie and it did very very well. And guess what? No matter how hard the media has tried, and they've tried hard, Joker still became the best, uh, the highest grossing R-rated movie out there. I'm, I'm just gonna look this up. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, highest grossing. Here we go. We've got Joker at number one, then Deadpool 2, Deadpool, The Matrix Reloaded, It, Logan, um, The Passion of the Christ, Hangover Part 2, Fifty Shades of Grey, and then Ted. I've never even heard of Ted, but there's your top ten. Joker didn't just set a box office record this weekend. The R-rated supervillain story blew past its own projections for a massive box office hole, both domestic and worldwide. And guess what? It didn't even need China. <laughs> it's not premiered in China. It's, it's obviously banned because of, you know, <laughs> the freaking, just how authoritarian China is. It's also because Hong Kong is literally taking up every symbol that it can. They use Pepe, they use the Joker, they use, um, uh, they're using Mei from Overwatch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't think they're using they're using Winnie the Pooh. Obviously, I don't think <laughs> that this movie is going to see a release in China. Frankly, yeah, we're not going to talk about Hong Kong too much. But j just before yeah. we talk about something else, uh, have you seen this picture, where it's quite literally Ooh. parts of Hong Kong <laughs> on fire with the Joker, the, the Joker poster? <laughs> nice. <laughs> that oh is basically God, the state of of the situation there in Hong Kong. But anyway, the Joker. We're actually going to talk about that for a minute. So, the Joker's doing well. Um, and because of that, the media's been trying very, very hard to play it up as if something terrible is going to happen because of this movie, right? Just despite the... I mean, that's that's a, take a, a second to rejoice in this victory here, because this is despite the callous smearings from the journals. I think the media is so hated at this point that when they smear something, it actually gets more popular. Well, there was a study in, I think, September, where they've assessed Americans' trust for media. They found that um, only 41% of Americans have any trust in mass media. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Well, I know when the movie was first coming out, you know, back in, it was like late September or something when it was first coming out, there were a whole lot of reports that theaters were restricting access to to people who could see it like i don't know if this was true the signs like this flo floated around all the time where it said like for example um over at regal cinemas for the safety and comfort of all of our guests single males of any kind are subject to inspection prior to entry you know shit like that Is i that don't know real? if this was if this was real or if someone just like printed off a sign and put it up and took a picture and then like took it down i don't know mm -hmm. But stuff like it, this. It looks like it looks like a joke. But, and maybe, you know. but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past a lot of these theaters, frankly. There were actually theaters that banned uh, face paints and stuff, like uh, where where they, where they banned like cosplays and and face paints for the premiere of the Joker movie. You know, I, ne I never honestly understood why people had to, like, cosplay to go to see the movie. Like, like people were, were dressed up as Gandalf and then they go see, Link, like, Lord of the Rings and stuff. I, well, I don't know. I, I didn't really get it. People want to have fun. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just... I, I think it's 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 a perfectly fine thing for people to do, but, you know... Oh, yeah, no, I... I, and scary. I, I, I definitely agree, but it's not like the movie is a convention, you know? It's not quite the same yeah. thing, But so I, I don't get it. But if people want to do it, you know, that, that's their business. People well, have been doing it for for decades, though, like, ever since, like, the early Star Wars movies. Yeah, yeah, and, and Star Trek, you know, Trekkies did it, too, and stuff. There's definitely a number of articles that came out before, during, and after the, uh, the release of Joker... We don't really need to read them all, but I'm, I want to just discuss them very briefly, just so everyone has an idea of what we're talking about. For example, on Vox, Joker has toxic fans. Does that mean it shouldn't <laughs> exist? You know? Um, uh, then you see um, on the Express, 
Joker film release sparks violent spheres as U.S. cinemas ba uh, ban bags and, and face paint. Security stepped up as Joker opens in U.S. movie theaters. For some reason, security was stepped up. I, I have no clue why. I guess they, they thought something was going to happen. On the Daily Mail, this one was the funniest of all. On the Daily Mail, it's way too terrifying. Joker viewers around the world walk out of the movie theaters and urge cinemas to ban the ultra-violent film, saying what? it glamorizes gun crime and deals with mental health issues in a triggering way. Let me guess. Let me guess. They found two or three um, nobodies on Twitter and then... They wrote an entire article based on the, the two or three Twitter users with like uh, 15 followers. It's actually a bit different. Um, you're close. You're close. They have four tweets here. Okay. And the first oh, one four. has... I'll, I'll, I'll one. The first one has nothing. The second one has four replies and one like. The third one has nothing. And the fourth one has two replies and seven likes. So like, like, like I said, these are nobodies who've, uh, who may or may not be all accounts from these journals themselves. Yeah, yeah, but, but listen to this, okay? They say, uh, I walked out of this movie, Joker, banned this movie. It's a psychological approach in the mind. I was rooting for him until shit got real. I would have walked out of Joker <laughs> after an hour if the missus would have let me. White dude next to me walked out of Joker in the next few minutes of the movie had me a little shook. I've never walked out of a movie, but with Joker I came very close. Here's the interesting thing. At the Daily Mail, they're the ones that took these, uh, these screenshots. They took the screenshots of the four tweets. And Twitter, in, in the screenshots, has bolded Walked Out and Joker. Those two, th those two sets of words. So Joker's bolded and then Walked Out as one unit is bolded in the tweets. That so means... these journals went out, their, went out of their way to look for it. Yes, you have to go to like Twitter search function and then search for Joker Walked Out. It just shows how lazy they are because they could have removed a bolt if they just clicked on a tweet. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be so obvious that they're you're trying their best to pick bones. I just ran the same search, you know, uh, Joker walked out. There's not that many tweets with people saying stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most of them probably. And you know what? For example, this person says, "I just walked out of the Joker, and holy shit, what a performance!" Like walked out as in the movie ended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had to hunt for these after, tweets. After, yeah, people walked out when the credits roll. It's, 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 it's <laughs> like, what the fuck? They went out of their way to look for it and, and uh, put a microscope on it and then be like, look, look at how evil this movie is. There really is a, a feeling that the media desperately wanted something bad to happen at a Joker screen. They wanted, like, a shooting. You know, th th there was, like... They want some... Was it they Dark Knight Rises Batman. that it happened at? There was that one theater shooting. Was it Dark Knight Rises? I forget. It's a uh, Dark Knight Rises, and uh, there was a dude who dressed up like sh like the Joker and shot up the place. There was no indication that anything was going to happen at at the Joker, other than insistence from media people. Yeah, but I mean, I I think they were really banking on it happening because it happened in. Yeah, I, I just looked it up. It's the 2012. Aurora, Colorado shooting. It happened then, so they want—they really wanted it in some sick way to happen again because th then they could justify all their all their negative hype towards the Joker. Yeah, yeah, they want the movie. It's almost as if they want the movie to fail mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah, I have an idea as to why, but it's kind of a, a, a roundabout thing. So, so hear me out for a second, okay? And this is going to sound a bit strange. I'm going to have to rant a little bit, and I don't That's really fine. have any any links to to back this up. This is kind of my own thinking on it. So. You get stuff like um, Marvel films, right? Mm -hmm. And Marvel films are these like, you know, they're, they're like what PG rated or something? Like they're, they're these PG action movies that yeah. are these grand adventures with like sprawling narratives that have taken a decade to put together. You know, all these various overcrossing movies. They're for like the super fans, but at the same time, they're not just for the super fans. They are quite literally for everyone. The Marvel movies are one of the most mass produced mass marketed um appeal to the lowest common denominator but still you know appealing to everyone um type of movie and there's nothing wrong with I've, that i've 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 read a great comparison to it the mcu movies are essentially cinematic fast food it's yeah. cinematic mcdonald's anybody can can enjoy it but there, there's very little of substance to them i mean it's it's entertaining it's uh i wouldn't say I wouldn't say most of them are bat movies. It's presentable. 
it's, it's, it's an it's an okay series that is a uh, that makes a lot of money for the mouse, especially after since they took over it. Yeah, but he, that's not quite where I'm where I'm going with my theory though. What I think is going on is that there's this is way beyond movies and it's it's way beyond video games and it's way beyond all of these forms of entertainment and yet it still encompasses them all. There's a strange alliance between like the hyper capitalists, the people who you know, quite literally the fat cats who just like rake in the money and then they they swim around in vaults with it, Scrooge McDuck style, you know? <laughs> Those people. And strangely enough, you know, the the cultural Marxists and and the communists and the people who want everything to be equalized, they've kind of found common ground in the fact that mass marketing both generates a lot of wealth and makes everything equal. So, for example, you know, you, there was that, that thing that went viral recently from, I think it was the BBC, saying that D&D &D is no longer for, for goony beard men. Now anyone can play D&D. &D. And there's also that, that big push about video games. You know, we have to make... Video games aren't just for gamers anymore. You know, gamers don't have to be your audience. That, 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 that sort of thing. Why do they always have to put down the original audience? It's, it's just like... They couldn't just let things be and be like, oh, now more people are enjoying it. No, they have to put down the people who were originally into it for for um, some reason. It's almost as if these people are um, the bullies who, who pick on nerds and then they just screw up and they have jobs writing, making $50,000 writing for garbage outlets. <laughs> You're talking about the, the Kotaku 50,000? Yeah. I don't know what's going on with Kotaku, but we'll have to sit on that news story for a while. We have a situation where mass marketing has, has aligned itself with social justice in a strange way, to the point that being mass marketable is almost considered to be, like, a, a moral good, and that you're, if you, if you, um, say, create a product for a niche audience, specifically for a niche audience, that doesn't have to be for everyone, that's a moral failing, which is why, for example, they go after anime, because anime has fan service, it has, you know, it has girls with big titties, it has a, a lot of the moe shit, or whatever it is you happen to be into whenever you pick up um, an anime or an anime game, they say, oh, look how objectifying that is, look how degrading that is, look at how I am offended in some way, because there's this... The, they call it the accessibility problem, and I'm, I'm probably going to do a video on the accessibility problem someday. But basically, they have they, they have this idea that everything should be mass marketable. These people, when when they when they when they see people complaining about uh, Captain Marvel or or anything else, they 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 are the first people who who go, "Well, it's not made for you." Yeah, exactly. Right? Like when, when it was so, when, when it was Black Panther, it was it's not made for yeah. you, Whitey. You know? Yeah. Regarding Joker. Because it was a financial success, they basically proved that there is a market outside of the social justice sensibilities, and so they were really hoping for some kind of shooting to, to justify all of their all their anger towards this movie. So, like, see, this is cause, causing mass, like, a, what is it called? Um, toxic masculinity, or whatever fucking buzzword of the week that these people love to discuss. Actually, a lot of them used whiteness. Like, in, what? <laughs> yeah, in, 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 in this article. Yeah, I think, like, is, is what I've read. Yeah, in, in this article here, uh, the real threat of Joker is hiding in plain sight. What the film wants to say about mental illness or class divisions in society is not as interesting as what it accidentally says about whiteness. <sighs> whiteness. That's, you know, that's I... what it's about. It's about whiteness. The Joker's white. He goes around in white face. <laughs> as the movie went on through the, through the theaters... There were a few small instances of, of at least events that they can talk about and like really fucking push forward, right? So, for example, um, apparently a moviegoer at at a Times Square theater was escorted out out of the Joker screening after cheering on the on-screen murders. So he cheered too loudly in the movie; they kicked him out. And like every he was outlet, being loud and disorderly. So I, I guess, I guess I mean, like who, who gives a shit? People get removed out, out of uh, theaters all the freaking time. Yeah, but every outlet jumped on this because it was like finally the one thing they could say. Like something happened, something happened. Or how about this, how about this? A man in Washington had his guns seized after he made posts on social media about the Joker. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man, it's, I guess it's, it's, all, it's all the Joker's fault, dude. Like, I don't fucking know. There was apparently an assault at a Joker screening. 
where it turns out that somebody uh, he got physical with the cinema manager and a security guard. So he was a charge with assault and disorderly conduct. And that's it. Like th that's what? all the events that, that have been publicized that, that have happened at Joker screenings. There's not a shooting. No one, no one died. But like they, yeah. they, they, they basically put all their cards on this being like incel heaven and inspiring like 50 different shooters and it never happened. It's like explode, expecting a nuke, but getting a fart. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like anybody who works, who has worked in theaters will tell you that pe people get obnoxious all the freaking times in theaters. People get removed for being loud, too loud, too drunk, um, smoking, or, or, or even just complaining, like, or arguing with people. It happens all the freaking time because it's the Joker movie. That these hacks have to write articles about it. I know that when, um, you know, Suicide Squad came out, they didn't do that. When they, you know, you know, DC tried and massively failed to get like a DC cinematic universe off the ground. Yeah. They didn't do it. They didn't do it to that. They did it to Joker. And, and here's why, at least I think, um, in The Dark Knight Rises, Bane, he, he, he fakes it because he is ultimately a villain in the movie and... You know, that's just, that's just how he rolls. But he fakes a populist uprising against Gotham's upper class in that movie. That was a major theme of the second half of the movie. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, you know, you know, ironically or not, liked to use and still like to use Bane quotes. You know, mm -hmm. Gamergate did for a very long time, you know, calling themselves necessary evil and whatever. And saying that they were basically the, um, the ignored plebs as the game journals were, were high society. And in a sense, that's definitely true. Less so now since Gamergate ended, but in a sense, that was true then. Um, and so because the themes of the Joker movie are somewhat similar, where it's like the, the villain turns out to quite literally be an ordinary guy who was mistreated by the upper class. And in yeah. fact, if you actually watch the Joker film, by the way, if, you, if you're listening to this, you haven't watched the Joker film, go watch the Joker film. You'll notice that all of the true villains, like the Joker's not a hero, and he, he's definitely a villain, but all of like the real villains of the movie are all the people with 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 all power, the people basically. Who, who turned him into the Joker, basically? Yeah. So you, you have like you know the the businessmen, you have the you have the TV personalities, uh, the people from have, the stock exchange laughing at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you have all these people who who have serious social power over him, despite the fact that he is. A white male. He's still treated like complete shit, and he eventually snaps and goes on his shooting, and he inspires this this um, proletariat almost uprising against Gotham's upper class. And because that's such a very similar situation um, as Bane, and the movie with Bane in it, one inspired a shooting, and two, in, you know, the, the quotes of which are still used to this day regarding anti-authoritarianism and anti-social justice movements and events that happen on Twitter and and whatever. I think they just saw this to be another example of that, you know. Memes are going to come out of it, you know, terrorist memes, toxic memes. Scrump had a field day. And <laughs> and they didn't want that to happen again, so they had to really yeah, clamp down on it. Do a, do a thing about fear, do a fear-mongering article about the dangers of internet memes. Oh yeah, we've seen that constantly. It's yeah. it's the new moral panic like you said, you know, it's like blaming video games in the 90s, blaming D&D &D and rock music and all that BS. It's, it's, it's now we're afraid of uh, white males rising up because, uh, well, maybe maybe the, maybe the white males don't like pe to be told that they're living scum pieces of shit all the freaking time. Oh, well, who knows? Who knows? Who, who could have imagined that? Never. Did you know that back in the 50s, people were actually blaming cars because the, the, the mass adoption of cars allowed people to drive out of town on Sunday and not be caught not at church? <laughs> Seriously, like that's a that's a real thing. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. So in any case, as it turned out that the media was not going to get their their violent uprising like they were desperately hoping for, they had to they had to really latch on to anything. So we got we got articles like this, uh Joker movie under fire for using a controversial song. Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll Part 2 is featured in The Joker and people are voicing their concern. Um uh... Apparently Again, it's, bottom of the barrel. Yeah, apparently it's because the song was was because, made by a child pornographer. 
Okay, I mean, it's it sucks. The, the dude's... The dude sucks, but it's just... You know, we gotta... <laughs> so what if the movie features a, a, a song? I'm, I mean, what whatever happened to separating the art from the artist? Well, social justice warriors really don't like separating the art from the artist in general. When you play, uh, you know, an SJW game like Gone Home or something, it's all about the artist's feelings and stuff. Whenever you read, like, one of those articles on Kotaku that's literally just, like, the author talking about their personal feelings about a subject and, like, not even linking in video games till the very end or something. Like, I know Nathan Grayson wrote an article about what he thought the Switch was like because he dreamed about it and the article was literally his dream. And it's like, this was back before the Switch came out, obviously, but it was like, you know, shit, shit like that, where they don't believe you, you can actually detach the art from the artist, and like, everything is is tainted. So, you know, if, if, um, his name here is Gary Glitter, if he turned out to indulge in child pornography, then his song is tainted, and then all the movies that use the song are tainted. So it really is like a cancel culture kind of thing. Then you get weird shit like this, um, like this article. Hey, Joaquin Phoenix, what you're describing is an eating disorder. In an interview with IndieWire, Walking Phoenix talked about uh, losing weight for the, for the role. Um, the article says, Getting skinny was another way into the Joker. Phoenix lost 52 pounds, leaving him with protruding ribs and shoulder blades. While it was one way to, conflay, to, to convey Arthur Fleck's fragility, Phoenix found it empowering because you're able to control yourself in that way. He obsessively eyed the scale, and he used a nutritionist. When he finally reached his target weight, he sent, a, he, he sent a picture, and he said, I couldn't believe I finally made it. The weight loss lent itself to the dance and the movement. You notice a lot of dancers have very little body fat. It made me hyper aware of my body. I think that was part of, the, of why I felt I could move in the way that I did. You know and, what? Good for him. Yeah. Like now, he, I'm going to guess that this, this whoever is writing this article is going to try to cancel Joaquin Phoenix for a statement, aren't well, they? Well, he says... Um, he says, yes, because the person who wrote this article, uh, Courtney Enlow, says, uh, empowering, because you're able to control yourself in that way. That is the exact driving force for so many of us who have struggled with eating disorders. Get the fuck out. This isn't the first time Phoenix has described literal eating disorders symptoms as some kind of an act of method acting. Um... You, you know... Where, where do we begin with this? <laughs> was it an eating disorder when uh, Christian Bale got really skinny for The Machinist? I, I, I'll bet this thought would say yes. <laughs> or is it is it like some kind of body dysmorphic disorder when somebody, you know, gains a whole bunch of weight for a different kind of role? Or when somebody has to like... How about this? How about when a fighter makes weight? Is that an eating disorder? When they I have to know. lose five pounds before the before the match, you know, like according to her, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, yes, sometimes you have to adjust the state of your body in order to fit into a certain job. That is the nature of the world. It's not an eating disorder to do that. I think I think the best part about all of this is that the internet knows exactly what's going on, and it's all turned into a giant joke. So, for example, Cody Johnston with 107,000 followers on Twitter, he has this fake headline called Why Won't Any of You Fucks Just Shoot Up a Goddamn Joker Screening? A Plea from the Media. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get, like, all the various, you know, Joker Steps memes, how, you know, the Steps became, like, like a religious location in New York. <laughs> so someone photoshopped Jeb Bush on the Steps as he wins the election, <laughs> finally. Oh, here, here's, a, here's a very true tale. Listen to this. When I saw Joker, there was an incel that pulled out a weapon at the very end of the movie. He intended to kill some people in the crowd. A brave young woman stood up and said, Sir, after watching this movie, I understand what it means for you to live in a society as a gamer and how much oppression you face. Please put away your weapon and let me have sex with you. The incel put away his weapon and they proceeded to have sex right there on the floor of the theater. The entire audience stood up and clapped at the beautiful sight. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was like a, a Babylon B article. Um, mayhem at Joker screenings included signs, smoking, and one creepy guy. <laughs> you know, it's funny how it's seen these uh, these journals complaining about the declining trust in media. I mean, may maybe, 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 just maybe. 
I'm I'm sorry to sound like them though, but just maybe. People wouldn't distrust and dislike you so much if you didn't just lie all the time. So in the end, uh, these people really wanted Joker to fail. And if not fail, then inspire violence. And I think they, I think if, if we're, if we're going to just cut to the core of the matter here, because I think we're nearing the end of, of the, uh, of the podcast, at least for today, because I'm sure we'll be back without Scrump at some point. But mm-hmm. I think if we're going to cut to the heart of the matter, I think what's going on here is that at the, at the end of the movie, when, 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 uh, the Joker finally gets on the late night talk show that he, he idol he's been idolizing the whole time. And the guy oh, makes fun oh, of him. Spoiler, move. spoiler, 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 spoiler warning. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and the guy and, and the host makes fun of him, and then he mm-hmm. shoots him live on TV. He, he blows yeah. he blows his head off, basically. That is a direct rebuke to basically what has happened to late night TV, and in a larger sense to mainstream media, where you know, if you watch Jon Stewart during the um, the Bush years, even during the Obama years sometimes, you got some pretty good humor. He he, he was obviously left-leaning, but, you know, he took the piss out of Bush, he took the piss out of Obama, you know. He he didn't view his job necessarily what, to um, as somebody who should advocate for one, one side over the other. Now, he still did, because like, like I said, his, his own personal politics did seep into his act, as they are to do. But if you watch um, The Daily Show now... Well, I, I, there was, like, there was garbage in, in late night television, even even during the time that this movie was set. And there was an interview on Morton Downey Jr. in 1998. Uh, 1988, I mean. Um, on Ron Paul, where, where there was, like, a where they interviewed this guy... Where, where they interviewed Ron Paul and then they go like uh, and then they, the host was just essentially spitting on him and insulting him for him wanting to end the drug war. Some things never change really. Some things are just always garbage. I mean sure but, like, like, you, you do have instances where, where that happened but I think ever since Trump has, has become elected late night TV has gone from primarily being comedy to being about political activism and it's all shit now it's yeah. like it's all just garbage and i'm 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 stunned every single day that like youtube because youtube's algorithm is complete bullshit youtube pushes another like trevor noah clip into my feed yeah. and like i happen to have autoplay on so i accidentally go to it and i get like maybe five or ten seconds I, of the start of it I and had, it just sucks you know i logged out of i logged out of youtube the, the other day and then and um they, they were just recommending me the worst shit ever. I mean, if you want to see some real normie gray garbage, just log out of your, your YouTube account. You, you will see what they recommend to everybody. I, I was recommended fucking Lily Singh, of all people. A lot of these mainstream media sources that were, that you know, did at least okay work 10 years ago, or at least w- when they were doing schlock, they hit it behind at yeah. least a, a, a veneer of objectivity. You know, the, yeah. the veneer's gone. They, they are they are straight up like just these these moral activists. And I think I think with Joker what happened was the movie is directly a critique of those people. And that's why they needed it to fail. And that's why they needed it to not be popular. And that's why they needed well, violence it? to break out during a during a show. If the Joker was real, they would be the people who made the Joker into the Joker. Yes. They are. They are. The, they are the people who 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 um, stole his sign at the beginning of the movie and beat him up, um, made fun of him, and um, just shat over him without thinking twice. And um, these these are like I said, these are bullies who've grown up, and um, and now they they have a suit, they they have a, an air of legitimacy, and they're writing. A, they're making fifty thousand dollars a year writing articles telling you why you are you are a piece of shit and deserve to be ignored and and, and forgotten. Yeah, exactly. The movie is basically a, a giant character study, but it's also a giant essay on why a lot of the people who spend their time, you know, engaging in cancel culture and 
and and and calling people out on Twitter and you know waving their finger at you whenever something or or whenever someone says something wrong or they step out of line or you know these people are the ones that would have created the Joker, and yeah. this movie is showing you, ex- you the the viewer exactly how bad these people are as soon as you pull away all of their rank and their title and their money and that air of of superiority and objectivity they have around them as soon as that all goes away you you see who they are fake moral superiority that they they claim so they 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 try so hard to to pretend how long do you think until uh joker gets rebooted into a shitty female version you know like ghostbusters 2016 style um uh, hopefully not anytime soon but it you know some fucking ceo will probably do it We'll probably, no, I mean, some fucking, some fucking producer would probably throw a shit ton of money into some soulless um, remake. Well, it's it's already kind of happening with the uh, what's what's it called, Mockingjay, right? Maybe, maybe. From, from what I've seen. But you know what they could do? They could just uh, where, where make they go her. Like, oh, we're gonna take on toxic masculinity and sexism. <laughs> 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 yes, Karen. As if anybody would would want to watch shit like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it, though. You get, like, uh, you know, the Joker as a female. You know, she's told to smile too much at, too much at the bus stop. And she has some... There's misogyny. Old old white men trying to deny access to abortion or something, you know? Lack of representation in, in STEM. Maybe she's objectified. Maybe she's objectified too much. Maybe she's objectified too little. Yeah, have you seen some of those articles where, where women are like, guys don't catcall at me anymore and I miss it? <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, or there was a uh, freaking hell of uh, men are punishing women over the Me Too movement by not talking to us. <laughs> God damn it! I've, 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 I've read a great comparison to it, and, um, and they said this anonymous person. Sorry, I've read a great. Com- sorry, <laughs> <laughs> my tongue. I need to just chop my tongue off. <laughs> <laughs>